What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Poor Man Mods. This is a super poor man mod today. I'm going to show you how to make your own coolant system pressure tester for about $10. They normally cost anywhere between like $60 or $200 for a kit, but I'm going to show you how to make one directly for your car for way, way, way less than that. And it's pretty easy, but first I'm going to show you how it works, and then I will show you how to make it. Okay, so we take our original radiator cap off and then put on the radiator cap that we just purchased and made into this tester and put it on and it's pretty tight but it is on now take the cap off and take a tire pump. Ideally you would want one with a gauge on it, but I don't have one with a gauge. So I have to pump it up bit by bit to see the pressure. Now, you want to know the pressure rating of your cap before you do this. Like for example, this cap is a 13 pound cap. It doesn't say on here. Actually it does say on here. It says 0.9. And that's 0.9 bar barometer. So 0.9 of 14.7 PSI, which is 13. So you want to find out what your pressure rating is because if you pump it up higher than that, you could create a leak that you didn't have before. So you don't want to go over your pressure rating. So I'm not going to go over 13. So I'm going to do one pump and then check it. Okay, how was it? About five. Another pump. Nine. Perfect. Right about 13. Now, what this does, it pressurizes the entire coolant system so it can help you find a leak or diagnose a bad head gasket. Um, what you would do, like, for example, you pump it up and you would see if you see any coolant dripping, and I do right here from this upper radiator hose so we know we need, we need to tighten it but I'm going to loosen the clamp so you can see a better visualiza visualization of a leak and how to fix it so let me do that okay so I loosened up this clamp a little bit and I'm going to pressurize it again just to show you that it is actually pressurizing the system and not just the radiator And so you hear it bubbling now, it's leaking. So once you find your leak, tighten up your clamp, or fix the hose that's leaking or whatever. And once you know it's fixed, depressurize it. And bam, there you go. This works, it only cost me about $10 to make. And it's a hell of a lot better than spending 60 to $200 on a kit. And then you just take it off. And put your other cap back on. And then you're done. Now, assuming you don't have any coolant leaks and you want to find a head gasket leak, what you would do, you would pressurize the system and you would leave this gauge on here and see if the pressure drops. And if there's no leaks externally and the pressure drops significantly in a short amount of time, maybe a few PSI in a minute, then you probably have a head gasket leak. Now it's gonna leak a little bit because most gauges, especially gauges on these tire pumps, do not seal 100%. So there is gonna be some leak, but if it's significant, you could have a head gasket leak. But like I said earlier, don't pressurize this too much or you could make your own leak and then make your car a piece of crap and then you're gonna wanna cry and get rid of your car and part it out and be done with cars forever, so don't do that. And now I'm gonna show you how to make this bad guy. I'm going to be making a coolant pressure tester today because my local store is out of one, so I'm going to make my own. All you need for this is a drill bit, a tire valve stem, a radiator cap for the car that you're testing, some RTV, and a cotter pin.
Okay, so now that we got it separated and we got the bottom piece off, we're going to replace this with a washer. So what we're going to do is put this on the bottom, put this rubber gasket that came off of here right there, put the washer on, then put the spring on, and then we're going to have to drill these out so this can fit through these, but this will stick through the top and then we'll be able to pressurize the system. Okay, so once you get <clears throat> these two pieces drilled out, you can go ahead and put the gasket on here and we're actually going to discard this piece and the spring. We actually don't need them. And also this other spring cap. So we go ahead and put the washer or the gasket on there and then this metal shim or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and I believe this part is actually what helps seal the radiator cap. This goes in the small hole in the neck and this along with this gasket seal it. So I, I'm discarding this because I had a lot of trouble getting the centerpiece out but I found a washer that is the exact same diameter of this. So what I'm going to do is put the gasket on this washer and then put the gasket over the valve stem all the way down just like that and then put this washer on and now this is basically mimicking the radiator capped plug right here so this will go down in the neck this will seal it and then this will be below pumping air in and then this will seal it so air won't get back up and go into the overflow and this is the trickier part because it takes a lot of force but now since you have all this drilled out you have to force this all the way in and it's this is actually a lot easier than it was before because this is the second time I did it and it's kinda like worn down and stuff but the first time I did it, it was pretty difficult to get this on but now you can see the threads are sticking up but there's rubber there so putting a nut on here wouldn't really seal this properly and we want this to be secure so this doesn't fly off if there is a leak. So what I'm going to do is take this cotter pin. Boom. Just like that. It's sealed. The cotter pin's holding it on. This thing is not coming out. <coughs> and this is what it looks like. And I didn't need to use this RTV at all. So let me just reverse dissect this for you again so you can see what all is on it. It's just this cotter pin, the radiator cap, cap, along with the top gasket from it, and the shim. And then a washer that is the same diameter of the plug. Now, I'm not sure if this plug is the same for all cars or not, but when you get your radiator cap to do this, you're going to want to find a washer the same size as this so it does seal. And then this rubber gasket to seal the valve stem. And this is a quarter inch or an inch and a quarter valve stem. So there you go. This is <clears throat> an extremely easy to make and cheap to make coolant system pressure tester. Okay, so there you go. Uh, do it yourself, coolant system pressure tester. You could essentially make this for free if you have all this stuff laying around, but if you don't, um, this radiator cap, I believe, was seven. 
the valve stem, a pack of that was like $2, I think. And then this cotter pin was $1.50. So right around $10 to make this. And if you have to buy a bicycle pump, I would recommend getting one with a gauge on it. Um, they might be a little pricier than the ones without the gauge, but it just makes it a little easier. But you could essentially have this cotter pin laying around, a spare valve stem, and a spare radiator cap, and you have a free coolant pressure tester, and it holds pressure. It doesn't leak. The only thing with this, instead of like buying a, a kit, is this will only work for your vehicle and cars that have the exact same radiator as you, or I should say the same exact radiator cap. So this won't work on all models. This probably won't work on my Sentra. This won't work on a Ford or a Chevy or whatever. Probably only Toyotas this will work on. So if you want to do it to another car, you have to buy another radiator cap and do that. But you could probably make like 10 of these and still be cheaper than buying a whole coolant pressure tester kit. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Hopefully you guys go out and make this. And uh... Get a sense of pride in making your own tools like this like this is a really simple thing to make and for some reason like when I made it put it on the car and didn't leak you, you just get a sense of accomplishment like you made a tool yourself and it's awesome I'm gonna put this in my tool drawer never throw it away until it breaks this is pretty awesome so uh, we'll catch you guys next time see ya.